What's up, guys? This is Mr. Davis and Mr. Glass. Hey, uh, Mr. Glass is going to be sending you some stuff to do. We're going to just go over the PowerPoint that he sent you so you can work on it, and I'm just going to discuss it. Uh, welcome to online teaching brought to you by the coronavirus. So here we go. Hopefully it won't take long, but you can get back to all the work you got to do. All right, so here we go. When we talk about the Civil War, we're going to be talking about basically it's going to be North versus South. But before that, I need you to understand something. If I took the word federal and grabbed it and had that F, federal means all the states together. But in this case, federal really is just going to refer to the north, okay? Now, if I grab that F and I turned it to its right sideways, it would make an N. So the word federal just really means national, okay? If I took that N and flipped it all the way or flipped it back to its side to here, it would make a C. That federal national also means central, okay? If I took that C and flipped it over, it also means union. So if I talk about the federal government, they could also use the word national, they could also use the word central, or they could word, use the word union. All of those things stand for the national government or the federal or central, and they all really are gonna represent the North during the Civil War, okay? Now the South, they just believe in state rights, okay? So for the South, they could use the word South, they could use state rights, or let me show you something really quick. Cut the F and cut the S in half, which means they're going to leave, which really just means secede. That leaves a C up there, or the South can be called the Confederacy. Okay? So those are the words that are going to be used that we'll talk about later. So if I talk about the North, I could say Federal, National, Central, and Union. If I talk about the South, I could say state rights, or they're going to be called the Confederacy or the Confederate States of America. Okay? All of this comes down to the fact that when we made our constitution, all of this is going to be fought over and we're going to kill each other during the Civil War over these same things. Now remember, if I grab the F and flip it over, the two people that are fighting during the constitution are going to be called the Federalist and the Anti-Federalist, okay? Now remember, if I grab that F and flip it over, the Federalists are from the North, okay? <clears throat> that means everything they believe in is going to start with a C or an F or an N. They believe in a big national government. They believe in the national bank. They believe in no slavery. Okay? Take it back up and make a C. They want the Constitution the way it's written. Now, really quick, the word immigration, if I did this between north and south, if I dot my eyes, it would be in the north. The north is, not, is going to need immigration because they're going to have something called industry. They're going to have huge cities with jobs, manufacturing, and who's going to come do all those jobs is going to be immigrants, okay? So the North is going to be industrialized, they're going to have immigration, they're going to have industry, and they want tariffs, and we use North-South, it goes into the North, they want tariffs to be high, okay? Because those tariffs, if they're high, are going to make the North rich, okay? When we get to the Civil War, we talk about the South. The South believes in everything that's opposite of the North, okay? So everything they believe in is going to start with the S. They don't believe in the national government. They believe that their state should have the right to do whatever it wants. They believe in state banks. They're actually going to need slavery, okay? Because they're going to have agriculture. And we're going to make, instead of a constitution, we're going to make an S out of it, a dollar bill. But instead of a dollar bill, they want to add the Bill of Rights to that constitution because they don't trust the North. Okay, now tariffs still go north south. They want tariffs to be low because the lower it goes, it's going to cost them less money. Okay, so what happens is the Civil War is still going to be fought over these same things that started during the Constitution. It's going to be fought over state rights. Who has the right to tell each state what to do? Is it the national government or the state government? Should we or should we not have slavery? And as we head west, should we get more slave states or less slave states? And tariffs. The higher the tariffs go, it helps the north and it hurts the south. And we're going to talk about how tariffs are going to do that, okay? Next thing is this. Turn to your sheet. It should say the Missouri Compromise, okay? The Missouri Compromise, if I can get my phone to come back on, really quick is this, Okay? The Missouri Compromise in 1820 is basically going to split our country in half over slavery, okay? So whenever you write Missouri, I want you to write it this way. So Missouri, what it just did is it basically 
split our country in half over the two S's. And it's going to be about slavery, okay? And what happens is this. <clears throat> Remember, above that line, that's where, that's the north. So since it starts with an N, they believe in no slavery. They don't need it because they have immigrants coming in to do the work for them. But the south needs slaves, okay? So the Missouri Compromise is about those two things. And what happens is this. Missouri, because it comes down below that line and it's coming this way, Missouri is going to become a slave state, okay? That leaves an M up here. And the main thing I need you to know is that Maine becomes a free state, which is going to be right here, okay? <clears throat> now, here's what happens. If I give the north one state and I give the south one state, that makes everything equal. So now we have as many slave states as we do free states. And if I flip that back over, that means the north has 11 and the south has 11 states. So now everything is equal and it makes the tension between the north and the south okay for a little while, okay? All right, moving to the next one. I think that is the Compromise of 1850. During the Compromise of 1850, there are three things that I need you to know. Since it's around 1850, there's a football team that are called the San Francisco 40, 49ers, okay? So we know that the Compromise of 1850 has to be probably about California because it's near 1849. The first thing that happens is this. California becomes a free state, okay? Number two, they're going to split this land that we just got from Mexico between, can you think of what it is? Utah and New Mexico. And both of them are going to get the vote on slavery, whether they want slavery or not, okay? And the most important thing is going to be this, is that they enact something called the Fugitive Slave Law. If a slave runs to the north, he is no longer free. Isn't that supposed to be uh, Nevada and Arizona? No. no. All right, so really quick. Thank you, though. This is my nephew, Court, by the way, asking good questions. All right, so here we go. If a slave runs away, now the law enforcement in the north can capture that slave and send him back to the south. And there is no more freedom in the North for slaves. And here's what happens. If this gets up there and somebody captures him, the judge will get $10 if he sends him back to the South. But the judge will only get $5 if he sets the slave free. So more than likely, a white judge is going to send those slaves back to the South. And it is going to scare the heck out of the North because now there is nowhere for slaves to hide. They have to go all the way to Canada if they're going to hide now. Okay? <clears throat> I don't know, let me see the last part. I don't know if it's even on there, but it should say that there is no more slave trade in Washington, D.C., okay? So, Fugitive Slave Law Act, law enforcement, and slave will end. Now, the next thing that's going to happen is this, is called sectionalism, okay? Now look on your sheet that Mr. Glass and I gave you. Sectionalism is this, is the idea that our country is going to be split into sections. The North, the South, and the West. And each section only cares about itself, okay? The North cares about its industry, what they're making money from, and the South just cares about slaves, cotton, and making money. The West is just out here trying to survive, headed to California, trying to get rich, get gold, all those things, okay? But our country is headed through a part where each section doesn't care about the USA, they just care, the North only cares about the North, and the South only cares about the South. And that is going to cause, and that's going to lead us into the Civil War. Because everything that the North decides is only going to help one person, the North. Everything they decide is only going to help the South. And it's going to lead to some big issues, okay? Next thing is this, the Lincoln-Douglas debates. <clears throat> Abraham Lincoln runs for Senate against a guy named Stephen Douglas. And basically what happens is Lincoln makes a statement. He says that I will not free the slaves. That's his whole thing. He doesn't want to free the slaves. But he did not want the South to secede. And the word secede means that the South is going to break away, not physically, but politically, and start their own country. Okay? Lincoln knew that if the South left, it would cause some huge problems. So he told them, I'm not going to free the slaves. I just want you to stay and we'll work things out. But they didn't trust Lincoln, so that's his big thing. He's telling the South... You can trust me, I won't free the slaves, but we'll find out what happens, okay? Now, moving on. Let's see if we can do that. All right. 
The Dred Scott decision. Dred Scott is going to be a slave, I mean a free man, sorry, that lived in the north, okay? So Dred Scott is going to be a slave that lives in the north. He is going to be captured by police. And when he is captured, they put him on trial. Hold that pen down that way, it'll write better. All right. He'll basically, <laughs> I was going to say now, he gets put on trial, right? And he says, look, I'm a free man. If I'm a free man, then I have the right to go to the Supreme Court. I have the right to a trial by jury, like we talked about in the Bill of Rights. So he basically goes to the Supreme Court. And remember, when they go to the Supreme Court, that is going to be called judicial review. And at the end of that court case, he goes and he says, look, I need to have freedom. I'm a free man. At the end of that court case, the future of the slave law said that slaves had no rights. And they were considered the property of their owner. They could not bring any case before the Supreme Court, and this is going to make the South happy. Look, how we're going to remember Dred Scott's name, just know this. Remember, I'm not, to be, not trying to be racist in any way, but a lot of black people have dreadlocks, so know it's about African Americans. And know that he's a slave. So Dred Scott's a slave, and they're going to say that now he's a slave, and that C means that slaves cannot become U.S. citizens. In other words... The Dred Scott decision tells slaves they have no right to be a citizen. They can't take any case to the Supreme Court. So black people during so black people are going to dread this case, and they're going to dread it because slaves can no longer be citizens, and they do not have the rights of citizens in the United States. Okay, that is the Dred Scott decision. See. Now, also what it does is this: at the end of the Dred Scott case, they are going to ban the Missouri Compromise. Remember, the Missouri Compromise is this: M I S. S, and there can be no slavery in the North. But now they say it is no longer any good, and now there can be slavery in the North. Okay? So those are the two things that are bad about the Dred Scott decision. That African Americans or slaves cannot be U.S. citizens, and now it's possible for slavery to go into the North. Okay? Now, really quick, because of this decision, the abolitionist movement is going to rise. And remember, you should already know this, hopefully. Abolitionists are people who want to abolish. Is that right? That's pretty long. <laughs> they want to abolish slavery. Okay, we're going to talk about these people really quick, who I need you to know. Number one is Frederick Douglass. Okay? Remember, Douglass was a slave. He taught himself to read and write, and he's going to become a great speaker. And he's going to create something called the North Star. So, how are we going to remember his name? Just know that when he looks into the glass, his hair looks up really high, okay? So when he looks into the mirror of the glass, his hair reaches up into the north, and he becomes a, a star, okay? So Frederick Douglass is going to be an abolitionist. He's going to be a great writer, great uh, orator. And when he looks into the glass, his hair looks up into the north, and you can see his picture there. You know his hair looks, looks really high, okay? The next one is Harriet Tubman. And just remember Harriet Tubman... We're just going to do this when we have, like, tub, Tupperware, Civilware, Tubware. If we make them look like a U and we just line them up, those tubs are going to take people to, to the North or to the Freedom and to the Union, okay? So know who Harriet Tubman is? William Lloyd Garrison. Know that his name has two L's in it. So he's going to write something called, it starts with an L, called uh, the Liberate, okay? The word Liberate means to free, Okay. All right, so Joanna Truth, just know that she's a woman, a slave, who wrote the truth about slavery. And the last one is Harriet Beecher Stowe, okay? Now, Harriet Beecher Stowe is probably going to be one of the most famous. She wrote a novel called Uncle Tom's Cabin. And wrote that in an anti-slave novel that inspires people to join the abolitionist movement. And at the bottom, I have HBS at the bottom, and it says this. This is going to be history's best seller. So just know that Harriet Beecher Stowe is going to write history bestseller about her Uncle Tom. It's really not about her Uncle Tom, but it's about a, a slave and how bad slave life is. But just how to remember that, okay? <clears throat> so those three people we got to know. Frederick Douglass or those four? Remember, when he looks into his glass, his hair sticks into the north, and he becomes a star, okay? Harriet Tubman, she takes Tupperware and takes people to freedom in the north. William Lloyd Garrison circled the L's. Remember, his name, he started something with an L called The Liberator. And Harriet Beecher Stowe wrote history's best-selling novel, and that is about her uncle, Tom, which is about how bad slavery actually was, okay? <clears throat> That's not good.
Good. All right. Moving on. The Kansas Nebraska Act is going to be this. Part of the Missouri, part of the Louisiana Purchase is going to be Nebraska and Kansas. Okay. And what they're going to do is they're going to let Kansas and Nebraska. Remember, there's no more Missouri Compromise. So there now could be slavery in the north. And what happens is this. Those two things, Nebraska and Kansas, are going to get the vote on slavery. That is called popular sovereignty. Remember, the word popular means where people are going to have the power. And what do they get the power to do? They get the power to vote. Okay. Now, the Kansas and Nebraska Act, let me read through this so you can get it. It says, if they get the vote on the issue of slavery, this was called popular sovereignty. This upsets the north and abolitionists, okay? And what happens is this, people are upset because if they vote yes, there can now be slavery in the North. And Kansas is gonna be some, called something bleeding Kansas. And just fill this in, over 200 people are killed over the vote on slavery, and they're gonna be led by a guy named John Brown. So we're gonna call this bleeding Kansas, and John Brown is gonna be one of the leaders of that kills a lot of people, okay? Because of the Kansas-Nebraska Act, the abolitionists are going to rise up. Okay, the Republican Party was started to abolish slavery. Okay, Abraham Lincoln will become the first Republican president and the 16th. So, because of the Kansas Nebraska Act, and because there can be slavery in the North, and because African Americans could no longer be U.S. citizens, they have no rights, the Republican Party is going to start to end slavery. A guy named John Brown, just know I'm just going to go over this really quick. John Brown and his sons took over a federal arsenal and invited the slaves to join him, the same John Brown that killed people in Kansas, okay? Slavery, what the heck? This is much wrong there. Sla no slaves showed up to help John Brown and his sons were caught and they were hung. Brown was a hero to the north and he was a villain to the south, okay? And because now this no the, south, the, north, the south is really scared, because now the North is trying to give the slaves guns and trying to free them and start a rebellion. And it scares the heck out of the South. Abraham Lincoln will become the 16th president in 1860 and the first Republican president. And remember, in Lincoln's inaugural address, he said he was not going to free or not going to free the slaves. Okay? He only wanted to prevent the South from seceding or leaving the Union. Now these two I'm going to let you fill on your own. <clears throat> it basically says. Uh, sorry guys, you know how good I am with technology. Anyway, there's two questions there about Lincoln's goal, and then the second was, why do you think the South would not trust the North? And you need to fill those in on your no with notes, Mr. Glass, I think is gonna give you for some of those things, okay? Now, the last thing is this, I'm gonna ask you, what are the advantages and disadvantages of the Civil War? And just to go over these really quick, and we're done. All right, you can go back to whatever you're doing, sleeping, Netflix, games, whatever you're doing. I'll be eating. All right, so here we go. Talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the Civil War. Population. Who would have more people? Well, the North does because they're going through the Industrial Revolution, okay? People are moving from the South to the North because there's jobs, and who's coming in here to do all the work? Immigrants, right? So they're going to have more people. Number two, who has the best leaders? The South. They're going to have great leaders like Robert E. Lee and people like that that know how to fight, okay? The South is going to, the whole Civil War is going to take place in the South. Why? Because all they've got to do is defend their land. Lincoln's job is, he believes the Union's job is to come into the South, get it, and bring it back into the North. That's their whole purpose. So the South just has to defend their land, okay? Railroads, factories, telegraph, industry, guns and ammo, and Navy all belong to the North. They have everything they need to fight a war. They have ships. They have a navy, they have guns. And why do they have all this stuff? Because of the industrial revolution. They can make whatever they want. They can put it on trains, ships, steam engines, and they can produce anything they want. <clears throat> they can print and travel as fast as they want. And so they have a huge advantage over the South, okay? Last food, food. <clears throat> the South is gonna to begin to run out of food. The North can replenish anytime they want. Terrace, now remember, who likes high terrace? The North. And what are those tariffs doing? They're making money for the North. And the reason tariffs are important is because what's going to happen during the Civil War is the North is going to completely blockade the South, where they can't get in and they can't get 
Nothing comes in and nothing gets out, okay? But what can the North can do? They can trade with whoever they want to make money, okay? To industry, we already talked about that, that the North has industry. And what is the South trying to preserve? Slavery and the way they make money and their way of life. Anyway, those are some of the causes of the Civil War. I hope that helped a little bit. I know this has been long and boring. Next time, hopefully it will be better. Anyway, be safe, get well. We'll see you later.